Today's video is about the single biggest, least understood driver behind the AI boom power, not chips, power. We're living through one of the largest infrastructure expansions since the Industrial Revolution, and artificial intelligence is about to trigger the biggest electricity challenge the United States has ever faced. In this video, I'm going to break down why AI is creating an unprecedented surge in electricity demand, why today's grid can't handle it, why nuclear, especially small modular reactors or SMRs, is the most compelling solution, and how investors can position across this entire value chain. I'll walk you through the landscape, the risks, the timelines, and the types of companies that could benefit, from uranium suppliers, to next-generation reactor designers, to utilities and ETFs. Stick with me to the end. I'll also share a simple one-ticker way to get diversified exposure to the nuclear theme. If you've ever uploaded a photo, fired off a tweet, asked an AI to summarize a document, or prompted a model to write code, that task didn't happen in the cloud. It happened in a data center, a giant industrial-scale computing facility running 24-7, 365. In the United States alone, there are thousands of these sites humming away non-stop. Some are so vast it's hard to visualize them. Take one of Meta's campuses in the Pacific Northwest, millions of square feet under roof, the size of dozens of football fields capable of housing a small airport's worth of metal and silicon. That's the scale. Now here's the part most people miss. Every single data center is a power hog by design. It has to be. Massive racks of servers, accelerators, and networking gear, industrial cooling systems, redundant power, battery backup, and around-the-clock operations. And AI workloads are dramatically more energy-intensive than traditional internet tasks. Training and inference for large models consume staggering amounts of electricity. Today, AI data centers already use a meaningful slice of United States power. By the end of this decade that share could balloon to a level that forces a wholesale rethink of how we generate and deliver electricity in america let's make this real if you add up the total power draw of hyperscale ai buildouts they're on track to rival or even exceed the annual electricity consumption of entire countries and that surge is crashing into a united states grid largely designed in the 1960s and 70s for a smaller population and a totally different industrial profile Aging transmission lines, limited spare capacity, and long interconnection queues were already a bottleneck before AI. Now multiply demand, add speed, and compress the timeline. That's the challenge. America will solve this. We always do. The real questions are how fast, with what mix, and who benefits. We need power that's scalable at industrial levels, reliable. 24-7 baseload power, not just when the sun shines or the wind blows, clean. Because hyperscalers are pushing aggressive emissions targets, deployable able to get from blueprint to electrons in a realistic time frame, and cost-effective over decades, not months. When you run that checklist, you keep landing on the same answer, nuclear and specifically small modular reactors, SMRs, and even smaller micro-reactors for distributed data center-adjacent generation. Let's address the elephant in the room, safety. Popular culture has colored perceptions of nuclear for decades, but the data tell a different story. On a per-unit-of-energy basis, nuclear's historical fatality rate is near the bottom of the chart, safer than coal, oil, biomass, natural gas, and even hydropower. Only utility-scale solar is lower. Nuclear plants also produce dense, steady, carbon-free electricity. A single pellet of uranium contains energy comparable to astonishing amounts of fossil fuel. That's energy density, and density is destiny when you're trying to power AI at scale without blowing past emissions targets. The symbolism of legacy sites coming back as clean power hubs for cloud and AI is powerful. You're seeing blue-chip tech companies line up long-dated power purchase agreements with nuclear assets. Why? Because they can't afford downtime, and they can't afford to miss their decarbonization commitments. They need always-on, zero-carbon baseload. Nuclear uniquely fits that bill. On the policy side, we've seen bipartisan momentum around modernizing regulation for advanced reactors, streamlining permitting and lowering barriers to safer designs. For once, policy, corporate demand and technology are rhyming. Traditional gigawatt-scale nuclear plants are engineering marvels but they're massive, expensive, and slow to build. SMRs attack those pain points. Smaller footprint, think about 10 acres versus hundreds for legacy plants. Factory-built modules with standardized ship-then-assemble components reduce on-site complexity. Passive safety systems use designs that rely on basic physics, gravity, convection, instead of complex active systems. Long refueling cycles up to decades in some designs mean lower operational interruptions. Right-sized output, roughly 50 to 300 megawatts per reactor, is enough to power a small city or a large AI campus, and you can scale them in clusters. Siting flexibility means they can be placed near demand, close to data centers, industrial hubs, or integrated into existing grid nodes. 
Imagine a world where, instead of waiting years for a huge plant and miles of new transmission lines, a data center campus can co-locate with modular nuclear generation. Less line loss, fewer interconnection headaches, predictable, clean baseload power match to load growth. That's the vision SMRs bring to the table. AI adoption isn't linear. Model sizes keep growing. Inference is scaling to real-time experiences across search, productivity suites, developer tools, e-commerce, entertainment, everywhere. Meanwhile, enterprises are starting to run their own specialized models on private data. Edge AI is emerging. And yes, blockchains, high-performance computing, and advanced simulation workloads are part of this rising tide. All of that rolls up to electrons, a lot of them. If you believe in AI's growth story, you must have a power thesis. And if you have a power thesis, you need to decide which parts of the value chain deserve capital. Here's how I think about it. 1. Uranium producers and fuel cycle. SMRs still need fuel. Uranium miners, enrichers, and conversion facilities are the front end of the nuclear cycle. This bucket captures the raw material side of the theme. Prices and volumes here can be cyclical, so position sizing and risk management matter. And as always, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research and consult a professional. Advanced reactor designers, particularly those focused on small modular reactors or micro-reactors, represent the purest play on the SMR thesis. These companies are designing the reactors that, you know, could one day sit right next to AI campuses. Some are still early stage or even pre-revenue while others already have meaningful pipelines and partnerships in place. One name that a lot of investors are watching is New Scale Power, ticker symbol SMR. They're a developer that's really focused on modular units designed for flexible deployment. Utilities and independent power producers, often called IPPs, are the obvious winners from these long-dated power purchase agreements with tech hyperscalers. Utilities with existing nuclear fleets, or IPPs that are positioned to own and operate next-generation reactors and sell firm clean power at premium contracts, well, they could see some pretty attractive economics. Especially if regulatory frameworks are supportive and capital costs are shared. Even modular reactors need a ton of heavy engineering vessels, pumps, heat exchangers, control systems, and solid construction management. So, Tier 1 EPCs, engineering, procurement, and construction firms, and specialized component makers can really benefit from a wave of standardized deployments that, honestly, could reshape the whole industry. So SMRs solve a big piece of the puzzle, but, you know, transmission upgrades, substations, interconnect gear, high-voltage equipment, and grid-edge software are still essential. Companies in this bucket profit from tying it all together, especially near dense load pockets around major metros. If you want diversified exposure without picking single names, there's actually a nuclear and uranium ETF, the Vanek Uranium and Nuclear Energy ETF, which trades under the ticker NLR, that bundles many of the sector's core holdings into one position. One ticker, one trade, broad coverage. Let's tackle the common pushbacks head-on. Nuclear is too expensive. Legacy megaprojects were costly and slow, no question. SMRs change the cost equation via manufacturing. When you move from bespoke, one-off builds to replicated factory-produced modules costs really have a path to come down with learning curves and supply chain maturity. Plus, if a hyperscaler is the anchor customer, financing and contractual certainty improve. And remember, the alternative is not free power. It's scrambling for intermittent sources and betting on storage to bridge gaps, all while AI workloads need five nines of uptime. So, what about waste? Well, waste volumes from nuclear are actually pretty small compared to what we get from fossil fuels, and with modern practices, it can be safely contained. Longer refueling cycles and advanced fuel forms are making things even better, optimizing the whole waste profile, and, you know, some next-generation concepts are aiming for even more fuel efficiency and new recycling pathways. The point isn't that waste doesn't exist, it's just that it's manageable, especially when you compare it to the public health costs of combustion-based energy. Isn't permitting a nightmare? Yeah, it can be. But policy is moving and honestly modularized and standardized designs are really helping to simplify the whole review process. The more we repeat builds of proven designs, the faster we can go. Think of it like commercial aviation. Once a platform is certified, the focus shifts to production rate, not reinventing the plane every single time. Renewables can do it all, right? Well, I'm pro-renewables, absolutely. Wind and solar are essential. But here's the thing. AI needs firm, dispatchable, round-the-clock power at scale. Pairing renewables with long-duration storage and overbuilt transmission will definitely help, but nuclear provides a clean baseload backbone. This isn't about choosing either or, it's about and. The grid of the future is really a portfolio. Follow the money. Some of the world's best-resourced investors and tech leaders are backing advanced nuclear putting serious capital into reactor startups and fuel supply chains. Why? Because they live the power problem every day. They see interconnection queues. They model data center loads 5-10 years out. They know the cost of downtime and the PR cost of missing emissions targets. If you run the hyperscale calculator, 
you end up circling nuclear again and again. We're also seeing enterprise customers enter long-term, take-or-pay power contracts, effectively underwriting new clean capacity to secure dedicated electrons. That's new. Historically nuclear output fed the grid. Now you're seeing a model where dedicated clean baseload is committed to an AI campus. Expect more of that as competition for capacity intensifies. Phase 1. Commitments and Contracts Watch for power purchase agreements, siting announcements, and regulator milestones. This is where OEMs and utilities line up financing, permitting, and anchor customers. Phase 2. Manufacturing and Supply Chain Buildout Component suppliers, heavy equipment fabricators, and EPC partners ramp. Early movers with proven quality and delivery records can gain share as programs standardize. Phase 3. First Wave Deployments Pilot SMRs come online at strategic locations, near large AI campuses or grid-constrained metros. Early data on uptime, operations and maintenance costs and safety performance builds confidence. Phase 4, Replication and Clustering Once the template is locked, replication drives costs down and timelines shorter. Multiple modules cluster at high-demand sites, financing gets cheaper, the flywheel spins. Throughout these phases, expect grid investments to run in parallel, substations, transformers, undergrounding, high-voltage upgrades, and grid-edge orchestration software to balance local generation and variable renewables. Even if the long-term thesis is solid, execution risk is real. Here's how I think about it. Diversify across buckets. Don't bet only on one SMR OEM or only on miners. Blend fuel OEMs, utilities and independent power producers, grid enablers and an ETF sleeve for ballast. Size for volatility. Early stage designers can be headline sensitive so keep speculative positions smaller. Timeline patience is key. Nuclear is measured in years, not quarters, so anchor to multi-year theses and avoid overreacting to single headlines. And policy watch, follow permitting reforms, advanced reactor approvals and incentive structures, since these can be catalysts. Counter thesis discipline matters too. Track storage breakthroughs, demand side efficiency gains or architectural shifts in AI that could temper power growth and adapt as the facts change. From the SMR developer camp, one public name many investors study is New Scale Power, ticker SMR, focused on modular reactor technology aimed exactly at the kind of flexible, scalable deployments AI campuses need. On the diversified side, a simple way to get broad exposure is the Vanek Uranium and Nuclear Energy ETF, ticker NLR, which holds a basket of uranium and nuclear-related equities. Utilities and independent power producers with nuclear exposure, uranium producers, fuel cycle companies, engineering, procurement, and construction firms, and grid enablers round out the shopping list. I'm not telling you what to buy, that's your call, but those are the categories I'm watching closely. If you think you missed the AI rally because you didn't buy chips early, don't assume the opportunity is gone. The next wave of AI investing isn't just about semiconductors. It's about the infrastructure that keeps those chips fed with electrons. AI without power is a Ferrari without fuel. The market is waking up to that reality, and capital is starting to flow accordingly. In my opinion, the highest upside may sit with the companies building and deploying SMRs, the right-sized, factory-built, clean baseload solution that can park next to the very data centers driving this demand. Pair that with selective exposure to uranium supply, utilities signing long contracts with hyperscalers, EPCs set to standardize deployment, and grid enablers stitching it all together, and you've got a diversified play on the backbone of the AI era. If you want a practical way to act on this theme, here's a watchlist segment to start your research. This is not financial advice, always do your own work and size positions for your risk, but these names map to the key choke points of the nuclear buildout that will power AI. Before we start, a quick framework. I'm organizing this by the parts of the value chain, fuel and enrichment, reactor designers and SMR plays, operators and service providers, and grid scale enablers. That way you're not just buying tickers, you're building a portfolio that mirrors how electrons actually get made and delivered. Let's begin with the fuel cycle, the front end that keeps every reactor running. Add these companies to your watch list Kamiko, ticker symbol CCJ, Centris Energy, ticker symbol LEU, Uranium Energy Corp, ticker symbol UEC, Denison Mines, ticker symbol DNN, Energy Fuels, ticker symbol UU, and Encore Energy, ticker symbol EU. These companies sit across mining, processing, and in Centris's case, enrichment, arguably the tightest bottleneck in Western supply. The thesis is simple. If AI drives a nuclear build-out, fuel demand follows. The risks are also clear. Uranium pricing can be cyclical, project timelines slip, and policy headlines can swing sentiment. That's why I treat miners and enrichers as a basket rather than a single bet. Same theme, different levers. Next, let's talk about the reactor and SMR developers, where, honestly, a lot of upside lives if deployment really scales. Put new scale power, ticker symbol SMR, and Oklo, ticker symbol OKLO, on the list. These are the kinds of companies aiming to deliver factory-built, right-sized reactors that can be co-located with data centers or sited near industrial load. The opportunity here is pretty asymmetric. 
successful certification, financing, and those first wave deployments can unlock replication and learning curve cost declines. But, you know, the flip side is execution risk, regulatory milestones, capital intensity, and timelines are all big factors. These are the names I'd keep smaller in position size, but honestly high on conviction monitoring. Now let's move on to the operators and critical service providers, the folks who already produce or maintain nuclear assets and can ink those long-dated clean power contracts hyperscalers want. Add Constellation Energy, ticker symbol CEG, and BWX Technologies, ticker symbol BWXT here. Constellation is really all about operating nuclear fleets and selling reliable carbon-free baseload power, exactly what AI needs at scale. BWX sits more on the engineering and services side with expertise that can translate into steady demand as new capacity gets designed, built, and maintained. These types of businesses can offer a different risk and return, more cash flow visibility than pre-revenue designers and direct leverage to the install base. On the grid scale enabler side, the glue that connects generation to load, keep GE Vernova, ticker symbol GEV, on your radar. Think turbines, grid equipment, and services that make the whole system work. Even if you're co-locating SMRs next to AI campuses, you still need interconnects, substations, and high-reliability balance of plant. This is where a lot of the capex gets spent quietly in the background and where scale and installed base really matter. Finally, an early-stage entrant to watch is nanonuclear energy, ticker symbol NNE. This is an emerging micro-reactor concept aimed at portable distributed power. It's speculative, so, you know, treat it as a venture-style allocation if you follow it at all, position sizing matters but it fits the narrative of highly modular transportable clean power close to the point of use. Okay, let me recap this watch list cleanly so you can write down the ticker symbols for your notes. For fuel and enrichment, you've got CCJ, LEU, UEC, DNN, UUBU, and EU. For SMR and micro-reactor designers, look at SMR, Okolo, and NNE. Operators and services include CEG and BWXT. And for grid or equipment enablers, there's GEV. Now how I think about using a list like this, start with a core anchored in operators and diversified fuel names like CEG and CCJ, since they tend to move with real-world power and fuel dynamics, then layer and select growth with SMR designers, SMR and Oklo, accepting higher volatility for, you know, potentially higher upside if milestones hit, add some picks and shovels exposure with BWXT and GEV so you benefit from the build-out, no matter which specific reactor platform wins. And if you want a single ticket overlay for breadth, just keep an eye on a nuclear or uranium ETF in your core to help smooth out single name risk while you continue your research. Before you buy anything, here's a quick risk checklist to keep in mind. Regulatory timing, capital expenditure, financing needs, supply chain execution, uranium price swings, and honestly, the possibility that AI power demand curves shift because of efficiency gains or architectural changes. None of those are deal breakers for the overall thesis, but they definitely impact when and how value actually shows up. That's why, for me, this is a multi-year theme, not something you just trade quarter to quarter. So bottom line, if you believe AI's next big constraint is electricity, then owning a thoughtful cross-section of fuel reactors operators and grid gear is really how you put that view into action. Use this watch list as your starting map, dig into filings and those milestone calendars, and, you know, size your position so you can actually stay in the trade long enough to let the thesis play out. We're at an inflection point right now. AI is not slowing down electricity demand isn't slowing down either. The grid, as it's currently built, just can't handle this alone. When you line up the physics, the policy, the corporate commitments, and the investment flows, nuclear, especially modular nuclear, emerges as the keystone, plain and simple. That's exactly why I'm spending some serious time on this whole theme. If you found this breakdown useful, hey, do me a small favor. Hit that like button so more investors can see it. Subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming deep dives on specific companies across the nuclear value chain, including fuel suppliers, SMR designers, and those utilities signing long-dated clean PPAs with AI leaders. And, as always, none of this is financial advice. Please talk to a professional and do your own research before making any investment decisions. Thanks for watching. In the AI age, power isn't just part of the story, it really is the story. See you in the